All right, our next caller is Nicole from California. Hey, Nicole, how can we help you? Hey, guys, how's it going? Good. So I will try to sum up um, my whole uh, story here in less than two minutes, not take up too much time. So um, when I was about six months old, I was diagnosed with spinal meningitis. Um, What had actually happened was I was in Stanford Hospital for about three or four months. um, And what had happened was the disease actually affected part of my quadricep muscle in my left leg. Um, They don't really know at this point, this was back in 1982, if it was the high fever that I hit at 105 or if it was the actual meningitis. So in a nutshell, um, after about four months uh, back and forth on what to do, they decided to go in through my hip and actually remove a portion of my left quad, the muscle in there. So in turn, I was in a body cast for about seven to eight months after that. Then when I got out of the body cast at about 18 months old, um, my leg, well, so sorry to back up. I forgot, sorry. What, what had happened was they had to go in through my hip and release, release the quad muscle um, out. So they had to do surgery there um, when I was like eight months old, then put me in the body cast. And then um, I was in that for a while, came out of the body cast. Um, they had to do physical therapy to kind of get my leg to function correctly, um, get it to work and move. So essentially I didn't really start walking until I was close to three years old. Um, so I've been in physical therapy for till almost about eight or nine years old, twice a week, um, back and forth from Stanford. At this time, um, I grew up in Fremont, so it wasn't a huge deal. Um, so we'd go to Stanford two to three times a week, physical therapy, just to kind of get my leg to function properly. Um, what essentially ended up happening was my left leg is now shorter than my right leg, as well as my left foot is a size and a half smaller than my right foot. So on my right, I wear an eight on my left. I wear a six and a half. So all growing up, um, I was in therapy. I went through multiple surgeries. My last one being when I was 12, uh, 12 years old in sixth grade. Um, I wore the orthopedic suit shoe with the lift to try to balance out my back. Obviously, being 12 years old, my mom gave up the battle. It's very embarrassing as a 12-year-old girl. So she finally said, you know what, screw it. So um, I walked with a limp my whole entire life um, with my left leg being very weaker than my right leg. Um, My right leg has had to do the majority of the work my entire life. Um, From walking upstairs to, right, I still can't ride a bike standing up. I can't hop on my left foot. Um... Of, with one leg, there's just certain things. So I guess essentially what my question is, um, is I pretty much can function and do everything. Like, you know, I grew up playing softball, snowboarding, skiing, you know, all the basic sports. Um, but there's just one thing that I just can't develop is my legs. So I've worked out since, you know, I've been about 20 and I'm 39 now. And I've always skipped leg day per se, because it's embarrassing and I can't do it. And Um, so I've always done spin class or I've hiked a lot, um, but it just doesn't develop my legs like I want it to. And I think that my upper body is really, um, suffering from it because it's like overworked per se, because I always do upper body. Whereas I think if I develop my lower body, then, um, I think that it would essentially help my overall appearance and, you know, kind of give me a little bit more, you know, built in in tone. So <laughs> that's that's my question. <laughs> okay, I'll let you guys take it from there. I'm hoping that you guys can point me in a good direction or some some ideas to help me out. Yeah, with what well, to do? What a lateral training, man! What a story! Yeah. I mean, you're first off, you're probably a badass uh, uh, now. I would imagine going through all of that as a kid. Uh, now as an adult, um, you're probably a badass. Am I right? Pretty you can resilient. Be honest. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, luckily I went through it in the '80s, and it's and I grew up like. And I, you know, I got teased a lot by my limbs, but thank God it's not right now, or I'd probably be in a world of fervor social media and stuff. So it was a lot easier, I think, to go through it back then. Um, you know, my parents never, they never, uh, they never made it a deal. It was never really talked about. It mm-hmm. was like, no, you get on your bike and you go, no, you play softball. It was That's it. Great. Mm-hmm. So I never really grew up with that, like, kind of, it was, it was just, it just wasn't a big deal, but. Yeah you know, you still have it in the back of your mind. So no, that's, that's uh, yeah, what a story. And, um, and yeah, I guess, right. You, you are a badass. Okay. So here's the deal with the training with the lower body. I would avoid 
all exercises that involve both legs at the same time. Your training should be entirely unilateral. Every single lower body exercise. Yeah. Single leg, leg press, single leg, leg extensions, like single, everything. Single. Everything, one leg at a time, you know. Uh, and start with the, the, the weaker, less dominant side. And that's we'll it. And, and here's how I would start, Nicole. This is what I would do, okay? I would do about 15 to 20 minutes every single day of unilateral training for your legs and keep the intensity moderate. I wouldn't go super high intensity. Keep it moderate. Do it every single day for about 15 to 20 minutes. When you start to feel like, whoa, I'm starting to get strong and I'm starting to get good at this, then I would reduce the frequency down to about four days a week, but I would increase the time that you're focused on the workout. So now you're going from 15 to 20 minutes to 30 to 40 minutes. And when you get really strong doing that, then you go down to three days a week and now you can do a full, you know, 30, 45 minute harder unilateral workout. But that should be your entire leg workout. You should do no exercises with both legs mm -hmm. on the floor together. You're already doing the cycling. You're doing the hiking. You know how to move with both legs. You have been for your whole life. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want you to strengthen that necessarily. I want you to complement uh, everything else you're doing with the unilateral stuff. That'll make a huge difference. Um, in what you're talking about, in building muscle and building okay. strength, and it won't strengthen some of the imbalances that you might uh, have already developed. Are you are you training in a gym or at home? Um, no, I actually have a PRX rack at home. Um, when the pandemic hit, and I was home with an eight year old and a five year old, um, I basically built um, a whole gym. I have a PRX rack. I have a sled. Um, I have like ropes. So I do a lot of. Um, I like, I do a lot of sled work. Um, I know Sal, you talked about, like, I do like a lot of sidewalking, like with the pulling of the sled, um, that I really like. Um, so I have a whole gym at home and, you know, and one of my biggest things is I always just wanted to be able to squat. But the problem when I do that is when I squat, I tend to go to the right yeah, and my whole yeah, body yeah, goes yeah, to no that right leg. Symmetry. I would, and I would love to see you get, uh, I would, I would love to see you get a suspension trainer use this. I have one. Okay, great. So you use the suspension trainer and actually do like pistol squats. And I, I'm sure right now that those are, they're, they're, are they challenging? How do you, can you do them? No. So I do. So with the TRX, I do what I do is I'll hold them. And, um, so lunges are kind of difficult. Like already, obviously I try to do Bulgarian split squats and I can do them on one side perfectly fine. But then the other side, obviously, I'm overcompensating. My back is coming into play. My even my neck is coming yeah, to play because yeah. everything is overcompensating for that leg. So I'll use the TRX to hold, you know, to hold myself in place. But then essentially, what happens is I'm getting an upper body workout now so, because okay. now I'm holding myself so stiff. But I will use it to do squats to try to even out, um, so you know, to try to get lower. But you know, it's it's still it still goes to the right. It's, so, you know, so, it's just inevitable. So so don't squat. <laughs> Not with both feet on okay. the ground. Uh, I wouldn't even do Bulgarians. I would try and do either pistols or use a bench. Okay, so you're for, and, you, and you could use. So th imagine the bench. You're sitting down on the bench. You have the suspension trainer also, and use the suspension trainer to help you get up out of that position with one leg. With one leg. With and, one leg. And okay. Start with the the less the weaker one, and you might even have to do this at first, which is totally okay. Putting a pad underneath there, so it's a very because we don't want to. What you don't want to do is cheat the rep. Okay, so I don't. I, I care more about you getting up and keeping your hips and your chest and shoulders square. And so, what you might have to start at, which is totally fine, is a, a bench, even with a cushion or something. So it's a very short range of motion. Get strong in that range of motion, then get rid of the pad and get and the the dominant leg, the strong one, needs to mirror what you can do perfectly with the weaker one. So let it dictate the training. Otherwise, you're always going to have that that dominant side wanting to compensate when you eventually do bilateral stuff. But for now, everything is single leg. You start with it. If you find yourself, like you mentioned, like Bulgarian split squat and you cheating, that's because that's a really deep lunge and that's challenging and you're, you're not ready for that yet. I don't need you there yet. I'd rather you do a very shortened range of motion up with perfect form mm -hmm. until we can get a little bit more depth. And so that is the goal, the way it should. And, and honestly, like Sal's recommendation of like every day, 
that's I just that one exercise. That one exercise, I'm going to get you really good mm -hmm. at getting up off the bench with perfect form on our weaker side. And if that means I got to start with a big old cushion underneath you at first, that's fine. We we get good in that range of motion. Then we then you get to a place where you have perfect form there. Then we drop the cushion, and wherever you're at with the weak side, you mirror that with the dominant side. Now, if you have to okay. that, that squat rack, uh, I would also recommend like a step up with your weaker side. Yes. And so you, you, you know, you can brace uh, alongside the post. Uh, I know it's a little bit uh, you know, in, instable sometimes. Yeah. Or sh real short. Yeah. You don't have to go that high. And like, that's where you start. Um, but, you know, secure yourself so you're in good posture, good upright posture. Uh, start with your weaker side and, and really kind of dictate it uh, around, you know, how many reps you can do with that side. And then just, you know, frequency is everything. So yeah. just 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 let that leg guide, uh, you know, the amount of volume that you're going to bring into the workouts. Yeah, and, and Nicole, what this means is for a long time, your right leg is going to get an easy workout. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that means that because the left leg is dictating – for a while, you're going to get a left leg workout, and the right leg is going to just feel like it's going through the motions. That's right. And that's 100% what we want. What we don't want is you to have a hard workout in both legs because then all you're doing is you're you're just continuing to you know strengthen that imbalance between the left leg. So you got between the legs. So you got to keep it a harder on the on the. That's why the the weaker leg needs to dictate. It literally means the stronger leg is going to get an easy workout for a while. And then the second thing is your all muscles are stronger on the negative portion of a rep than they are on the positive. In other words, I can lower way more weight under control in a squat than I can lift, right? So when you're doing these exercises, the hard part will be the lift, right? But then when you go down, try to do it slow and control. That's yeah. where that's the big focus. So that's where stability comes. When you're doing that step up that Adam was talking about where you're or that stand up exercise, it's going to be hard to get up and you're whole, using your arms, you're like, "Oh man, this is real tough." But now it's time to sit down. Go down as slow as you possibly can and see if you can do it without using your hands. And you might plop down at first, but keep practicing. And you'll notice that the negative will get better way faster than the positive does. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And I care I care about your form more than I care about the depth on the bench right now. So even though we talk, you hear us talk all the time about the benefits of range of motion and that's so important, what I don't want you to do is either the step up or the get up, so the two exercises that Justin and I are talking about, just because you can, you're strong enough to step up on a, say, a three foot bench. If you got to turn your body and tweak it to the side and kind of cheat it up to get up every time, doesn't count. I don't yeah. want you to do that. No. I would rather you. I would rather you, you start on point. a fucking yeah. six inch step. You know what I'm saying? Like I want, I want to, I want to see a six inch step perfect. I mean, and like Sal saying, real slow on the way down, stand up perfect. And, and it be perfect form, and then we just slowly increase the range of yeah. motion until you can do something pretty deep with perfect range, now, uh, perfect control. Now, Nicole, because we're talking about uh, a, a large imbalance due to some you know actual structural issues, a shorter leg, smaller foot, and, and, and years of, especially as a kid, walking a particular way, this means we can't neglect any muscles on that left side. So that also means... Do not neglect single leg calf raises. Do not neglect. Here's an exercise we almost never talk about on the podcast. It's not a big deal, but this is one I would always recommend to runners with shin splints and stuff. And in your case, I definitely would recommend. Uh, you want to do tibialis raises. So a tibialis raise is I literally stand on a really low, like maybe like a five pound plate on my heel and I lift my toes. So I'm working the muscle on my shin. This also means I'm going to strengthen abduction where I bring my leg out adduction where I bring my legs together. Don't neglect any muscles on this left side. So do exercises kind of for everything. Of course, make the focus the the big compound movement, the one that mimics, you know, what you're going to need in real life. But no don't neglect anything and don't be surprised at how quickly your body responds. But frequency is your friend here. 15 to 20 minutes every single day and I'd like you to throw in a mobility component uh, here. 90 90s. I would love to see her prime yeah. before she does this. Yeah. So do so you I do um I do right now. I mean, obviously it's not what you got your mobility, but I have done yoga for almost 15 years. I do it about three times a week. Um it's just something that has really increased um you, you know my strength in that leg. So I do do that, but yeah, I mean some sort of more central like mobility. 
Okay, well, here's the deal. With, with, with yoga, and you've been doing it a long time, uh, I would place special emphasis on the, uh, the, the single leg balancing movements. Okay. Okay. So just like because, <laughs> yeah, like, like, like literally that's the focus. So just because you're in a split stance, you know, like if you're like warrior, I think one or two, we tend to think, oh, this is unilateral because one leg is in the front. Not, it's not really unilateral because the back leg is still engaged. This is why the Bulgarian split stance squats to you. It was like so much cheating. Cause even though that back leg is behind you, it's still holding on to something and you're still engaging that's it. Right. right? So what we want you to do is real, pure, unilateral work, meaning the other leg is out. It's not even holding on to anything. It's just the left leg. So do that with your yoga as well. And MAPS Prime Pro, uh, yeah, I think, would be very beneficial to you. So if you don't have that, we'll send that to you because there's I, some I, movements into that I yeah. think you'll like. And, and, and yoga is great, but I would rather see 90-90 um, uh, moves done before you do the leg training, and I would love to see assisted Miguel planes. So I did a, I did a. If you don't know what that is, I did a video on that on um, Instagram. Said, I'm sorry, you said the assisted what? I didn't hear you. Assisted Miguel McGill M C G I L L. And uh, and I did them on, I I did them on our Mind Pump Media IG. Maybe and you hear me, I give credit to Squat University, and I'm actually talking about uh, when you and I think it's on our YouTube channel Mind Pump TV also I talk about when you're okay. down in a squat it's really common for someone to have their their knee cave in on one side more than the other and so that's what I'm, I'm discussing with this this movement is because there's a stability component in there there's a strength and control component in there uh, this would be a really good way to kind of prime uh, your hips and leg before you go into uh, some of these exercises we're talking about now now this is now the, the next things I'm going to recommend really are adding 1%, okay, to what you're going to do. But what we want to do also is we want to maximize your central nervous system activation um, and mitochondrial health. This will help with some of these adaptations. So uh, a little bit of caffeine before you work out, if you don't already, probably a good idea. Yeah, that's already, okay. it's already there. <laughs> All right, good. And then, and then if you don't take creatine, I think, and, and of course, this is- I do, I do Legion. Um, I okay. do the Legion per your guys' request. I mean, I've been All listening right. to you guys for a while, so I like a lot of your products, like I do Ned and a bunch of stuff. Um, so I do the Legion, but I do it, I do it usually, um, I, I don't do it every day. I'll take it maybe two to three times a week, um, basically because I did, I felt it made me a little bloated, but which is what you have mentioned before on yeah. it. Um, are you are you recommending I take it before? Yeah, no, you could take it at, take it after your workout. Uh, before is fine too. Actually, it doesn't make a huge difference. Instead of taking it two or three days a week at, at the full dose, take it every day at half a dose or a quarter dose. I'd, I'd rather have you take it frequently and equal the same amount for the week than to take it less frequently at higher doses. And you may find if it's stomach bloat that you feel, sometimes this can happen with creatine. You may find that the smaller doses are a little bit easier. All right, all right. All right, Nicole, we're going to send you Maps Prime Pro if you don't already have that, okay? Oh, thank you so much. No problem. Sweet. All right, well, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks awesome, for calling. Cool. Um, you really helped me a lot. I got a whole page of notes here. <laughs> awesome, Sweet. Thank so, you. All right, you guys, right on. Have a good one. You, you too. too. You know, as a, I tell you what, as a, as an early trainer, a client like that would terrify me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just so I many, know, dude. you know, but as a, as a later on, that's the kind of client. Oh, I, I love this. Yeah. I love this because there's, um, and I know I, I can't see her and actually, but I know, uh, I know the little, like I guarantee you one of the things that she, what she does is she's competitive. Listen to all the sports yep. she still yep. does. Yep. So she's probably when she's doing that weaker side, really trying yeah. to muscle it Just up. like barrels through That's it. That's right. And so, and she's probably shifting the left and right and she's yep. not, a, not helping the imbalance in pursuit of trying to get that leg stronger. And I, I know I'd have to tell her, like, listen, and that's why I was talking about the cushions. Like, oh, yeah. we're going to start with just a little six-inch mm -hmm. range of motion right now. Drilling the technique yes. is, is at the utmost importance here and the quality of the movement because we're, you know, we're so limited in terms of, like, making sure that we want to we wanna really hone in on the right uh, type of movement. Yeah, and, and, you know, when we're dealing with and, – and here's why we were so adamant about, like, disengaging the other leg completely – this isn't necessarily what I would recommend to the average person with a typical muscle imbalance. But what we're dealing with here are structural issues that can't be changed. And 
This is an imbalance that has been trained for her entire life. Yes, yes. So, so she's so good. So her body's so yeah. good at compensating with the other side that if I have her right leg touch something else, it's going to do something this without is, her even realizing. This yeah. is actually why I asked her if she was working out from home or the gym because this is actually a place where I love machines. Like this with leg extensions and a leg press machine right here. Uh, because I can keep the, her whole body stable and yeah, just yeah. really focus on one side at a time. This, they, in fact, I mean, that's machines were originally designed for rehabilitation. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is where they have tremendous value because it's going to lock the yeah, body fixed in position. Positions. Yeah, very fixed position, and I could really just you know isolate one side of her body. So that's why I asked that first because. It, I know that to your point, Sal. Like you know, even a Bulgarian split squat or a lunge, which is considered a unilateral movement, you still got that trail leg involved. Totally. And when mm -hmm. you've been your whole life, thirty years plus, you've taught yourself to use that other side to yeah, help right. out. It's not going to be yeah. completely you find so, your upper body it's, rotating. Yeah, and all it's kinds hard of to shut that off. Uh, and just by saying, "Hey, stop using that back yep. leg," yep. you know, so. Um, yeah, but I, you know, really excited to hear, uh, her how, progress. Yeah, right? her progress. So hopefully yeah. she reaches back out to us.